Hello, it's me, Angela McCray, founder of Uncorking Culture. Happy Women's History Month. Um, I'm so excited to kick off Women's History Month with a woman that, you know, I've been following her journey in wine. Um, you know, she's really creating groundbreaking work in diversity um, in South Africa, um, in CK Bayala. Uh, I'm so excited to bring her in. So let me get her in here now because, <laughs> hey, CK, how are you? I'm good, and how are you, Angela? I'm good. Happy Women's History Month. Thank you, thank you, and happy Women's History Month. Thank you. So just kind of, you know, right now, it's evening there, right? What is it, uh, 7 o'clock? It's, yeah, it's 7 o'clock. <laughs> so, so, so uh, you know, tell me, what this is harvest season for you, so you, this is a busy season. It is a busy season. Um, it's exciting. I can say that I think... Harvest is a festivity. It's a time of festivity. It's um, it's exciting. It's new wines. It's new production. Um, everything is just alive. Everything <laughs> is alive, and you're looking forward to new new wines. So, like today, we went tasting because we've got um, our new wine, which we're going to be adding on the on the line of Aslina. So we're adding another mm -hmm. wine. So awesome. we went today because we're trying to check how far it is from pressing it. Mm -hmm. So. It was, it was one of those exciting moments to say, oh yeah, yeah. Now we know like, okay, a few days, two more days, then we're pressing this off the skin and we're moving on with the other ones while we're crushing on the other side, having grapes coming in. And so, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So tell me a little bit, like what is this new wine that we could be looking forward to and how soon can we um, have it on the market? <laughs> I was not ready to disclose that part. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. No, because actually I, it's like, it's the very first time I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's more like an experiment, of, even though the experimentation. So, because I said to a friend of mine, like, it's experiment. She's like, so how much are we doing as an experiment? I'm like, it's five tons. And she goes, five tons cannot be an experiment. <laughs> That's an investment, right? That's a decision. Exactly. <laughs> five tons cannot be an experiment. I was like, well, because it's the very first time, I'm going to call it an experiment, but even though it's not, but I'm going to call it an experiment because it's my first time doing this kind of wine. I've dreamt about doing it this for as long as I can remember. Awesome. You know, before I started the wine, I was always curious about this part. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, now let's do. So, yeah. So, okay, can you at least tell us when we can expect it? <laughs> um, you can expect it July, July, August. Okay, and it's going to come to America, right? It's going to be as part of the first deployment? It, 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 it will come to America, I think. Well, I'm going to say Wine for the World has been saying, they're like, we want it, and I'm like, uh, they're like, can we have it all? I'm like, no. <laughs> it's, not it's still very little. And she keeps us going, it's like, okay, then can I get more than anyone? I'm like, no. <laughs> so it will come to America, but just a tiny bit. Like everyone will be getting a taste of it, really. Oh, I love it. I love it. So this is something that's going to be exclusive. This is something that's kind of like your work, your passion, something that you've been dreaming about, which kind of gives it a story, right? I like, I've always wanted to do this always wanted to do it. So it, hence, even when I was starting to do it, you know, when you've got, you've got those, the butterfly, when I tasted today, I was like, okay, because now you're like thinking, the other wines I've been making, it. I've been making Cabernet Sauvignon for since 2004, when I joined um, Stelica Wines, I've been making the, uh, the red blends. I started obviously making white wine fully on a commercial scale mm -hmm. when I started at Lina, mm -hmm. but different than the making this one. This one, it's been something that I've always said, one day is one day. One day I would like to try this. One day I would like to try this. Until um, probably about two or three years ago when I was in the U.S. and I started tasting, I'm like, oh, there are people already making this. Ooh. And then I started tasting, I'm like, oh, it exists, actually. Mm. Okay. But that's still, so, like, a magical, right? It's something that you um, you imagine. It's something for me. Yes. It's for me because it's something that I was always curious about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder how it will taste if this were to be done. Mm -hmm. And so I'm finally doing it. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's well, see. Congratulations. I mean, we definitely wish you the best on that because we want to make sure that we have some, right? When it comes to the United States, you can make another five tons, another 10 tons. And this is something that we can continue to see as part of your line. So, yeah. I, so one of the things that I think, you know, for some of the viewers who may not have tried you know, a Selena Wines as of yet, right? This might be their first introduction, right? I mean, I've had your cab, I've had your Asami, I don't know. Asami. As, uh, Asami? 
Umsasane. Umsamsame. Yes, umsasane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what does that mean? Umsasane, it is, uh, it's the Akasha tree. So that is an iconic tree in Africa. Have you watched like The Lion King or mm -hmm. anything that shows the continent? Um, general, they will show those trees. That's it's an umbrella tree. So that's the Akasha tree, but it's on the bottle because it's my grandmother's nickname. Awesome. So okay. That is our blend. And so that's one that's our top of the range. Wow, that's amazing. So it's like it's these stories. So I feel like everything that you're creating, it has a story. It's connected to you in a real personal way. So what made you um, name that blend after your grandmother? So actually the whole company is named after my grandmother. <laughs> 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 her name is Aslina. Mm -hmm. So I grew up under her guidance. So mm -hmm. I grew up under her guidance. She's been the pillar of my life. She's been basically everything. Mm -hmm. She's been the love in its totality. She's been the person um, who represented for me love. Mm -hmm. And I believe I am where I am because of what, of what she added to my life, because of the values she instilled in me. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to name my company after her. I named it Aslina. But then when I named the wine, uh, the, the, the Bordeaux blend, which is our top range, I decided, because you can give it any name, it's a blend. So I was like, I'm going to name this with her nickname. Mm -hmm. So basically, the, the, the blend, it's, it's like a double dose of grandma. So wow. some people say, no, we want, so I basically call that one specifically, that's the grandma. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I love that you're paying homage to the matriarch. I mean, in our in black culture all over the world, the matriarch, the mother, the grandmother is such a powerful presence in our culture. And yes. um, and I just love that you've honored her in that way. Um, and, you know, it's just, you know, it's generational now. Right. It's a legacy that you've built. Yes, it's a, it's a legacy. Yeah. And I think this is perfect conversation as we talk about women's, you know, history month. Right. And you yes, that is being. Month. Yes, and you're a Wonder Woman in wine. I mean, you're the first Black South African woman to make wine in South Africa, and that to me is a huge accomplishment. And uh, tell us, like, when you when you first kind of realized that wine was going to be your career, like, was this something that you kind of fell into, or was it a dream that you've always had? No, I fell into it actually. Um, I think certain things you you don't know that's what you're gonna do, but uh, life brings you to that. Mm -hmm. um, when I was growing up, I remember that um, I wanted to do chemical engineering. Initially, it was civil engineering, and then it was chemical engineering, not getting scholarship, and then South African Airways saying, okay, here's the scholarship after the recruitment. Here's the scholarship, I'm gonna be studying winemaking. And this was me saying, oh yeah, sure, great. But I had no idea what they're talking about. I had the word study. The rest was like, it's like somebody says there's this and then you, the rest you're hearing blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> you only got to hear is study because that's what you want, right? Right, so right. You the study, this is what I want. So I had study and I was like, great. I mean, you know, so um, basically that's what happened. That's what happened. And then I came to the industry and realized that it was a completely different space, mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. different space than what I knew and dif different space from where I come from. And they had to navigate the space that I didn't know and try and make it my own space and try and make myself comfortable and adapt in a way in the space. So those were the things that basically I encountered when I got to the, to the environment because I'm from a village and coming from a village, you get to still in, this village, you don't see me, any white people. Right. All of a sudden, you're coming to a place where it's like a sea of white people. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, what's going on here? And then you're there, and then you're like, oh, shucks, I can't even hear what they're saying. And you're like, oh, okay. Complete so, culture shock. Culture shock, language, you name it. They, they'll crack jokes, and everybody laughs, and you look around, you're like, <laughs> Until it came to a point we decided in class, whenever they crack jokes and laugh, and then you laugh along. And then you, like, <laughs> you just like go with it. And some, and some of the students are like, oh, you understand? They're like, nope, you guys are laughing. So, <laughs> You're just doing the right thing, right? You're just trying to fit the I'm just doing the right thing. Everybody's laughing, so I might as well laugh. You know, yeah. let me do the right thing. Let me, so yeah. 
So, you know, it's interesting because you mentioned about growing up in the village. And, um, you know, I around this time last year, I was just returning from a trip around Africa when I went to six different mm-hmm. countries. I had a chance to come to South Africa mm-hmm. and I went to Kenya and I was with the um, Maasai tribe. Right. Oh, and they're gorgeous. Oh my gosh, the you know the, the the weaving, the you know the clothes, the beads, everything was beautiful. But the interesting thing is that we actually spent time in the hut, in the liquor hut, with women that actually made the, the liquor, you know, and the wine, mm-hmm. you know, the wine, the liquor, the you know, whatever yes. it is that they make <laughs> in the hut, and that and that's was their role in the community, right? And it just makes me think about even like my family roots. You know, my grandmother, she owned a, a nightclub in, in Washington, D.C. She, you know, yes. served alcohol. My great grandmother, she during prohibition, she made illegal, you know, corn, you know, bootleg liquor for the community. And so yes. I feel like there there is some roots, you know, in black African culture when it yes. comes to this lifestyles. Yes. But I remember, I think especially I'll speak in the context of the um, of our side is that traditionally we cannot have events of tro- talking to the ancestors without traditional beer. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. If you do it without, you might as well don't do it because. <laughs> so it's part of it. It's part of it. It's the big part of it. Mm-hmm. You may not have slaughtered a goat. You may not have slaughtered an animal, but this part of having liquor, traditional liquor, it is part of it. Mm. Mm. So it is a historical tradition. Besides looking at obviously the European style alcohol that we're using now, but our traditional beers, that was what was basically the core part. Wow, wow. And so for those traditions, I mean, you know, you mentioned your honored your grandmother. Is there any other things from your up, you know, your upbringing that you've brought to Aslina Wines? Um, whether it's community with your staff or whether it's, you know, something that you do during the harvest season, like how have you brought some of your culture to your winemaking style? I think, you know, um, everything ferments. When we make the traditional beer, it ferments, wine ferments. So um, I had made traditional beer when I was growing up. My grandmother taught me how to do it. Um, But I think for me, one of the important parts of our culture is being is, is that community part, is that family part, mm-hmm. is that part of belonging. And that is part of our values as a company, mm-hmm. that our values are we are a family. So that's how we deal with, whether we're dealing with our clients, whether we're dealing with um, with ourselves as, as, as the team, that we understand the person we're dealing with, they are part of us. Yes, yes. So yes. that's, for me, that is the key. Because is. that is part of the tradition, again, to say our community, this is how we grew up. Mm-hmm. You know, value that part of the other person, respect that other person. They are part of you. They are who you are. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's authenticity at the end of the day. It's allowing you to be comfortable in your skin. You know, you talk yes. about going into an industry where you were the only one, you were an outlier. And, you know, and how did you navigate that? Like, you know, you talked about, you know, just playing along and, you know, just kind of going with the social cues. <laughs> but, you know, as, I'm sure as you got, you know, more into it and as you grew and as you become more successful, new challenges are, came into play. Can you kind of talk yeah. about some of those? So I, I think when I started, a friend of mine, um, there's a friend of mine, Neo Letuma, she used to say, we're still students at that time. She goes, see and be seen. That was her motto. And when I started in, in the industry and I was like, you know what, my friend, I need to adapt and adapt in this motto of yours, see and be seen. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things is at places where we are a minority, we tend to shy away. We like, I can't go to that gathering because I'm gonna be the only one. I can't do this because I'm gonna be the only one. I'm gonna stick out, stick out like a sore thumb. So I was like, I'm gonna be the only one. I'm gonna represent, I'm going. Yes. But when I get there, it's not like I'm just a number. I made sure that I see everybody, I speak to everybody and they know to know who I am. Mm -hmm. And that was the key and network and build those relationships. By the time I get out of the seminar, at least I must know one, two or three people 
that I'm going to contact call when I'm back at work, that I can have conversation when I'm away from that space. Mm. So in that way, it was more like building this community within the industry, the community that I'm going to know, that I'm going, that I'm going to have friends, that I'm going to, you know, people that I'm going to relate to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those things, it helped, it helped a lot. So much so that I'll be looking for something and I'll call whoever in the industry I'm looking for. So then that person will direct you to another one. And so that's how you and I ended up actually knowing people in the industry, navigating my space in the industry. And then ended up navigating it and making it our space. Mm -hmm. Just that understanding that, you know what? At the end of the day, we're all human. We're all people. And people are just people. One of my friends likes to people are people. Yeah. Whether you can classify them and put them at different classes, but bottom line is people are people. Mm -hmm. They're all human. So, and I just love it. I mean, I just love how you just like owned it, right? You, you, you know, you, you, you received this wisdom, this knowledge from a friend. You implemented it, and that in turn allowed you to literally bust open opportunities for so many women and black people and other minorities around the world to come to kind of lead away to open up that bridge. Um, and I know you spent some time in the United States. Uh, working with uh, a woman winemaker, like what? Well, that's a whole nother thing, right? Like <laughs> you had to navigate not just you know South African you know wine country, but then you had to come over to the United States, and that's a whole nother uh, you know element of surprise, I'm sure. Yes, look, um, I think as I speak about like building bridges, building relationships. One of the things I can tell, um, I remember I had to, I wanted to go do my harvest in France, mm -hmm. and. It was someone I met in the industry, a corporate guy from a corporate company, Demtos, said to him, hey, I need to go do my harvest in France. And he's like, oh yeah, he linked me up with somebody and then I ended up in France. I did my first harvest there. When I wanted to go out, do my harvest in Italy, I remember that day, you know, when you are at work and then you feel like you've reached, like you, you exhausted, you just wanna break away mm -hmm. someone else. I go to my boss, I'm like, I was still at Silica, I'm like, I wanna go, to Italy and do my harvest. He's like, do you have a place yet? This was July. And I'm like, no. Nope. He's like, you know that Italy is starting to harvest in August, probably August or September. I'm like, yeah, probably. And then he's like, okay, if you do get a place, then you can go. I got out of there. I went to my neighbor. They're Italians. And I was like, any chance that I can get to do my harvest in Italy? He was like, hang on, he pick up a phone, he call his friend in Italy, and then he put the phone down. He's like, damn. So like, <laughs> like he didn't have to think, would say, mm, I'll think about it. He was like, oh yeah, sure. And when I started Aslina, there was that, those people in that era, everyone was like, no, you can use our Wi-Fi. Oh, you don't have an office yet. You can you come and crash in our office. You can use our Wi-Fi. You can, mm -hmm. so there was that support structure, Della Chia Wines, the High Road Winery. Uh, I remember the antique shop, which was also on this, uh, they're like, we know we're not in, in, in wine, but we're in tick shop, sell furniture, but you can crash in and use the office space. So wow. there was those, com those communities that basically have opened up for me. Mm -hmm. And it's again, it's a blessing. It's a blessing mm -hmm. because those things don't just happen. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't just happen, but life direct, direct all those things to happen. And so it, it's one of the things I'm like, it's a blessing. Wow, the ex ultimate blessing. And also, you know, just to kind of bring it back to like, you know, something that my mother used to say, closed mouths don't get fed, right? So it's like you have to, like you said, you know, see and be seen, but then also, you know, speak what you want, speak what you desire. Like, you know, yes. I try, and that what, the, what ends up happening is God, the universe, you know, everything just kind of moves in a direction to fulfill that, right? Yes, um, yes, and, I, yes. and I just love you sharing that with us because I feel like sometimes, especially for women, because, you know, a lot of women, sometimes we don't feel confident. Sometimes we don't, you know, f we feel stuck or we feel like we yes. have so many other responsibilities that we can't make things about us or go after our true passions. Um, yes, yes, but when yes. we do, when we do, look at all the amazing things that can happen, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and of course, it's, and then you talk about like, you know, building a connection with women all over the world. Like, you know, how has that been? Like, we're, you know, being a part of the Women Wine Wakers Collective, because, you know, I'm sure it's a collective of women that talk and get together and kind of share stories. Like, you know, what is what has been that like, you know, being a part of this, you know, this distinction? Yeah, look, being a part of the global community actually 
it's 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 great because you you are sharing and you are learning. Mm -hmm. You know, you as you share, you learn in the process, and and just to know that it also helps you as a person in the space you're in to understand that we all have the same issues. We all have the same. Um, not same ways of solving issues, but we actually can have the same problems but solve them differently, depending on where we are. Mm -hmm. So th those things for me, it's it's been an eye opener to say actually, you know, we all have we're all fighting the same battle. That's just like we deal with it in different ways and we approach it in different ways, and we 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 also shoulder on each other to say, you know what, I know what you're struggling with. I have done it this way. It might not work for you, but at least it gives you an idea. To, okay, if they did that, maybe if I do it this way on my side. Mm. So, so you got to you can kind of pick and choose like some of the experiences of other people, some you yes. know uh, challenges and how they've addressed it, and kind of figure out what fits for you. Yes, you customize yes. it for there's yourself. Because no, there's no one size fit all. Yep. That's so true. You know, That's so true. The life. So, but at the same time, we can learn from each other and pick and choose to say, okay, I, can, I think that can work. That can work if I use it here. Uh, you used it there, but I'm going to use it on this side. It's going to work, you know. So mm -hmm. to try, there's no book that says, oh, yes, we go A, B, C, D, we get the solution. And you're like, no, nah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Right. And I mean, and you know, it's just crazy because like, I'm still new to wine. Like I've been drinking wine for 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, black America, like, you know, wine is readily available to us. You know, um, if you go to the, especially back in like 20 years ago, like you go to the local liquor store, it's usually like malt beverages, beer, you know, liquor. And then, you know, the lower quality um, wines that have a lot of sulfates that have a lot of sugar that, you know, just really mm -hmm. aren't part of the fine wine, you know, kind of like distinction. And it's like, now, as I'm, you know, on the other side of 40, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I want to learn more about it. And I want to expose Black Americans and just Black people all around the diaspora um, yeah. for your for your work as a winemaker. What has that been like? Like, how have how have you been able to see from since 2004 the um, a, a shift in the consum wine consumers and just wine culture? Actually, th there's been a huge shift. There's been a huge shift. Um, I, or I noticed with when I start attending wine shows here in South Africa that when I started working, that was 2004, you'll get to a wine show and you probably see one black person coming in. And then you're like, okay, one, and you look around. Now, majority going to see that people are working in the industry. So, but now in the recent years, you start to see like literally people coming in occupying the space, taking the space, like enjoying and making this their beverage of choice. Mm -hmm. So th there's been a huge shift, uh, not just only on consumption, but also what I like is even in business side, on the business side, even on, um, on the working side to say, okay, what are other opportunities available in this industry? What mm -hmm. is it that I can do as a business within the industry? Um, I'm consuming it, but what I'm doing, can I turn it to be, to be a business? Is it possible? How can I work around this? So that for me has been actually, has been exciting to see. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I mean, you know, since this past summer, you know, with everything that's been going on here in America, um, with, you know, George Floyd and the protests, yes, like yes. the black wine industry, you know, has really shown a spotlight, you know, the professional, on the professionals, on the black winemakers, on the black brands to where, um, you know, the greater U United States wine um, industry is literally investing, right? They're investing, they're providing scholarships, they're providing resources. And, you know, it's only 1%, right? It's less than 1% of black winemakers around the world. And, and so it's being in a country like South Africa, where it's like 80, 90% of the population is, is black, like how has that, you know, that story been told? Because South Africa is one of the old world countries, right? So wine's been being manufactured and produced since the 1700s, right? Yep. Since, yes, since like, <laughs> over 300 years. Yes. Over 300 years, <laughs> produced in South Africa. But as much as the black population, we are about 80 something percent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only, it's a very, very small percentage right. of people 
in the industry or of black people owning businesses or of black people, um, I, I don't know, like running things. Right, mm. empower, it's having it's, power. Pe black people in power, still a very small percentage, very, very small. So, and, and this is what exactly is shocking because when you look like 80%, 88% of people in the country are black, but yet, you know, it's it, it, it's one of those stats that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at the industry itself, its history, is that since the wine was made um, way back, so one of the things that the wine actually represented a negativity to black communities, because mm -hmm. at some point, the wine was used as a, what do you call it? Or oh, say liquor was used as, as an oppression for black people. Mm. So you work and you get paid in wine or, you know, that it was called, it's called DOP system. Mm. That's called the DOP system. So that's when you work and you get paid in, in liquor. Not money to provide for your parent, for your family. No. You get paid in liquor. So mm. you probably get a little bit of money to buy a little thing, but majority you get paid in liquor. Which creates addiction, right? Creates addiction, messes up the, so the society. So basically, it's basically you're building this, so you're not really you're breaking down the society because that's how it ends up being. So yeah. Wow. wow. And were Black Africans, South Africans also working in the, you know, harvest? Or were they the prim primarily the laborers um, throughout the history of the Yes, yes, primary laborers. So it's only again recently in current years that obviously post um, 94 that now people will find them in management in the wine industry. Since 1994? Like it was obvious from 94, that's when it was open. When the country wow. opened, then we knew there's a, now we can, we can work in the industry, we can study. And this is apartheid. This is post-apartheid. You're, you're post -apartheid. So post-apartheid, then things opened up. So we have a question here. Um, someone asked, has a history of apartheid in South Africa's history with alcohol affected your business? And uh, no, no. I think um because my company started about what 2016. Mm -hmm. And so when we started already, there's been the movement even within the government within the industry actually to um to empower and to um let's say open for people to to build their business within the industry mm -hmm. but again with my history of being a winemaker so it's it has it's been different because not the same as anyone else i've started as a winemaker i had built those relationships so by the time i started making my own wine in the industry um it, people have been waiting for it Mm. I can say actually, it's one thing I can say is that actually the US has been my number one in terms of yes! support. Yes! In terms of the US has been number one and then followed by Europe. And then, but South Africa, obviously, I didn't start promoting in South Africa because I didn't have the infrastructure. Okay. So now there is this infrastructure. So I'm now actually actively um, marketing. Promoting from marketing in South Africa and South Africans are open and excited about it. Well, now this is now this right here is so interesting to me because when I was in South Africa last year in 2020, I had mm. a chance to visit um, Seven Sisters and mm -hmm. I talked to Vivian. I did an interview with her and she mentioned that her wine wasn't for sale in South Africa and her primary market was in America, specifically mm -hmm. black women were her number one supporters and her number one consumers. And, you know, when tours would come, they would it would usually be black women, bus loads of black Americans come in to see her vineyard. And so that was so interesting to me because, you know, you would assume as a business owner that, you know, your first consumer base would be local, you know, because, you know, the, a global push just seems so beyond. But can you kind of give us that context of how that works? It's a stigma. I think there's been that thing, people thinking black owned brands are inferior. Black owned wines are inferior and all that. And it's, I'm gonna call it part of it as self hate in a way, mm -hmm. because it's black people who are not really supporting black owned brands, they believed, you know. So it's like if 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 I cannot believe in my product myself, so 
how am I expecting the, the world to believe in it? Mm. So I think, again, with all the movement that happened in the US, then South Africa followed. Okay. So again, US led the way of saying, you know what, let's support black owned businesses, let's buy black, let's do this. And then South Africa followed. I love it. I love it. So, you know, so last, you know, last month was Black History Month here in the United States. You know, we only st still get the shortest month of the year, but um, we, we celebrate Black History all year yeah. round, right? Yeah, that's what, you know, um, my, my colleague, she posted that it's, it's the last day of the Black History Month, but it doesn't have to end here. Exactly, exactly. Black history continues. Exactly. And so one of the things that I, that I wanted to do to, to honor Black History Month, and just like you said, to continue it, is create the Buy Black Wine directory, which, you know, mm. you, we're excited to have you featured. So thank you for filling out the form and being a part of it. And it's a destination for us to be able to have a resource to support, right? And so, yes, yes. And so we want to be able to create that diasporic support where it's, you know, we yeah, we can support American, you know, Black-owned businesses, which is great, but we can also cross-connect because at the end of the day, when we connect that throughout the diaspora, then the, our economic power is greater yes. and yes. we can provide resources and um, education to each other. So, yes. Um, yes. so so, I'm totally aligned with everything that you're saying because it's so important at this stage right now, 2021, you know, for global, the global diaspora to kind of come together, right? Um, and continue yes. to support your wine. So if you guys haven't tried it, make sure you try it. Aslina Wines. And, um, you know, we've been putting up your social media as well as your, um, you know, your website. And I just want to just kind of pop this in so people can um, just know where to find you right here. Um, let me just, yeah. So you could just find um, Aslina Wines, follow her on Instagram. Um, do you do you manage your Instagram account or do you have a team to do that? Well, if my colleague does that, um, sometimes I do see it and sometimes I post when I have time, but generally my colleagues do that. Okay. Yeah. And these are, and this is just some, I just want to. I've got my own personal account, so which I post once in a blue moon. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us know what it is so we can start following you. <laughs> no, mine is uh, it's Nsugi Biela. <laughs> okay. All one word, no spaces, no dashes. Uh, Facebook is Nsugi Biela with Nsugi Space Biela. And um, I think Instagram is at Nsugi Biela. And then Twitter Nsugi underscore Biela. <laughs> one of them is NBL. I don't know which one. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, we know we, we'll, we'll make sure to find it and we're going to put it in the comments so we can make sure that people can also support you and ask you some questions directly because I feel like yeah. it's so important, right? And so I wanted to make sure people saw the bottle and saw how beautiful it is. I mean, this is one of my favorite South African wines. Like I, during the fall, like that's all I was purchasing from my local winery. <laughs> <laughs> was, was your red selections. Um, they unfortunately didn't have your entire collection, but whenever I go into the wine shop and I see it, I always buy it because it's so delicious. Um, yes. And yes. and so you just you just actually won an award last month. Yes. Can you yes. tell us about that? Um, well, I was, I was nominated. Okay, I was, yeah, I was nominated to, it's called the, what is this award called? Oh my word! This is so the bad. Diversity and Transformation Award. Yes, at the one. This is what happens. A friend of mine says, "No, that's long overdue," and I'm like, "Well, she's like, well, you've done this long. You've been doing this since you started working." So, <laughs> right. And I was like, "Yes, you're right. I've been doing this since." But actually, it's just it's the acknowledgement from the industry to say we're noticing what is happening. We're noticing what you're doing. So yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing because it's like you're as you're being celebrated amongst your peers, you're, you know, having those distinctions, I'm sure, allows you to have greater visibility. Right. Um, yes. yes. Uh, probably nominated for more honors and acknowledgement. Yes. Um, yes. And also having your name written in history, because that's yes. something that is, you know, it's something that's long overdue. It's like we have to fight for it. I know sometimes, you know, you don't want to play the game, quote unquote, but we have to. Yes. Yeah. No. True. Yeah. <laughs> so what so, are it's 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 um I think with the award there's a lot of again you 
there's a lot of media, there's, which is what we try to get. And also to be able to reach more people so that more people can know that there is an industry, there are people of color, they are doing stuff. So I can also do it. Mm -hmm. And I'll get people asking me, so how do you do that? Why, why are you doing this? How can I do it myself? You know, and, and I think one of the things I always sometimes struggle with though, when people say, um, oh, I wanna do one, two, and three. So what, tell me how, Tell me how do I, how should I do it? And my question is that what have you done so far? And then person says nothing. And like, okay. So you want me to go do research for you? <laughs> they want you to do the work for them. You know? So I'm like, so you want me to go do research for you? No, it's not gonna work. And so you're inspiring people too. So it's like, you know, you're taking a, you know, you're taking a priority, you're taking an initiative and you're, you know, teaching by example. Yes. yes. Do you have anybody that you mentor or anybody that, you know, or a group of women that you have? So I, I am involved with the Pinotash Youth Development Academy. So we are training young people through the value chain of the wine industry. And the, the academy is, 60, 40, 60% 60 women and 40% men, but it's 18 uh, youth of 18 to 25 years old. So they get trained through the uh, value chain of the wine industry, we do job placements. Um, there's another group right now that is working a part, uh, they're doing a project with, with Delheim. They're making their own wine. So it's the former students, they're making their own wine. So I got a message today. So how do we register a company? And I'm like, <laughs> go Google. I'm like, go Google, and then once you've Googled, you're going to find the information, then come to me to tell me what you find and what you're going to do with it. Right. And once that is done, then I can guide you, but go do it. I love that. It's like, it's like hold so, on, you do the research, you do the work, then you come back to say, me. It's like, come to me and say, I've done one, two, and three, but I'm confused. Why? Then I'm going to come in. Yeah, yeah. And that's great. And that's valuable lesson, right? That's how you teach people because... The better, the best way to learn something is to do it yourself. Because yes. if people yes. always tell you stuff, you don't value yes. it if it's being handed to you. Yes, and you become proud once you get it because you're like, actually, I did it myself. You know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. um, so I know because uh, you know, I've been in touch with Wendy Peterson from the um, South African yes. Wine Industry yes. Transformation Unit. Yes. So yes. how how has that been? Have you been like has that how has that um I'm sure I know you're a part of that effort or yes. they support you. So can you tell us a little bit about what that's like? I can tell you this. I think since Wendy came on board as the mm -hmm. manager, she does it from her heart. Like yes. she does it from her heart. So yeah, she's um like now she's been going, they've been going around with the new chairperson trying to find out what, because they understand that it cannot be a blanketed uh, approach. So they have to find out from each company, what is it that you're doing? Where are you going? How, what the help do you need? And in that way, they're going to be able to basically solve, assist people to solve their issues in different ways. So that has been actually going well. That has and what's, been going well. And what's been the greatest value you've received from them during this time? Because I know it's been hard with, it's, look, it's been hard. They've been also helping financially. They've been helping financially with the little they have. They've been actually helping. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So you know the work, the money's going to where the work is needed. Um, yeah. it, so what are some things you would like to see change in the wine industry? I think for me, um, opening more, I think for the industry to actually speak to the people they're trying to assist. Mm. He speaks to the people who are trying to assist. I think one of the things that the assist the people who are assisting others or the companies that are assisting companies or institutions that are giving assistance, what they do, they come with, oh yeah, I'm gonna come and do one, two, three for you. I think you need one, two, three. No, ask the person what they need because that's the only way you can assist the person when you when they tell you what they need, assist them with what they need, not with what you think they need because this is where we mess up we come to you and we're like, oh, yeah, I know you need this and you need that. <laughs> Actually, I need this and that, though. I really need these things over For here. For me, my priority is this and that so that that can move me to a certain level. Mm -hmm. And then the person said, oh, no, it's like, 
I know someone at some point asked me, okay, if you were to get like a million rand right now, it was just when I started the company. Like if we can give you a million rand, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This, can I tell you what is my plan first? Because <laughs> if you dump in money and you expect me to do this, that is not going to be helping this business. It's going to suppress the business more. Wow, wow. Because at that point, I didn't have enough outlet to produce that amount and say, I'm sending it there. Mm. So ask a person to say, what is it that you need? Mm -hmm. And then they give you what you need, other than just give, oh, this is what I think you need. And that it basically really suppresses us down. You know, I love that you said that because that's so powerful what you just said, because I feel like a lot of people, they, you know, they want to give and the only thing that they can do right from their place is money, because that's the easy thing to do. Right. And it's like, OK, that's, the thing. that's, the that's guilt, a, you know, I could clean my guilt that way. Thing to do. But I think sometimes just ask the person like, OK, even though, you know, I, I even if I know I want to give money, but let me check first. What is it that you think if I give you what is it that you need? What is the thing that one thing that you need? Because maybe a person is going to say, actually, I need guidance. Mentorship. Yeah. I just need guidance. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, fine. And give what is needed. And that's true succession planning, right? That's actually setting you up for success by, you know, having those conversations, having those moments where the plan can be talked about, like you mentioned earlier. Like, let me tell you my plan, and then you can kind of you know, process it and, you know, give some feedback. Let's make it into a, 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 an, a an engagement as opposed to a transaction. Yes. yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You know, and it's, um, and so, you know, what kind of messages would you give to, you know, young women that want to, you know, pursue a career in the wine business and or winemaking? I, I think when, whether it's wine business or winemaking or any other industry, really, it is important to understand the ins and out of that industry learn the trade, learn the industry, understand it, and then set your goal. And again, understanding that you're going to get a lot of no's around, but what does your heart say? Mm. What, what is it that you know in your heart? You might, sometimes we want to know, okay, if I, if my, if I feel like this is what I want to do, but I want to know if the T is going to be crossed facing that way. Sometimes you don't have to know that. As long as when you know, like, I know it's going to work. It's just that I don't know how the steps are going to be. And then allow yourself to be led to get to each step. Oh, I love it. I feel like I'm talking to my big sister. <laughs> but I'm the oldest, so <laughs> whatever. I be surprised. I might be the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, I'm just saying, like out of all my siblings, I'm the oldest. So it's kind of like, you know, having this wisdom and just having you share it, you know, the way that you are, it's so yeah. kind of like it's straightforward, you know, and I think sometimes when, you know, when you have these type of conversations with professionals, you know, usually it's talking points, it's jargon, it's, you know, very sometimes above the head, but you're like giving it to us straight and you're giving it to us from the heart. And that's something that is super valuable because it's something that we, that can stick right with us. And not just with people, you know, looking to get into wine, but just in life, right. And life all together. These are like life lessons you're sharing with us right now. Thank you. <laughs> shed life lessons. Yes, you know, and and so um, so what are you? When were the last time you were in America? Like when when I know it's a pandemic, but what, how is your relationship with America? How often do you come? Like when can we hope to see you sure. here? Before <laughs> pandemic, I was coming to the U.S. twice a year. Oh, really? For um, <laughs> trade shows or no? I was just coming visiting um, clients everywhere. Like I used to spend a week in Texas and then spend three weeks in the East Coast. Oh, awesome. Okay. So yeah, that's Are how you, I've been. Do you miss us? I do. <laughs> I, I do. You know, I've been, I'm only seeing you guys on the other side of the screen. It's, yeah. but it's better than nothing, but I do. Like those gatherings we usually do when I get to the States. Oh, they're awesome. Well, we got to make sure, are you connected with any of the black winemakers here in the States? Um, Not much, but yes, a few. Okay. 
So we're going to have to do something with you the next time you're here. We're going to have to make sure, because uh, I work with uh, Marcy Jones of Urban Connoisseurs. We just did oh, it. Yes, I know Marcy. Yeah, she's actually yeah. Um, in the comments. She's watching. <laughs> oh, hey, Marcy. <laughs> so we definitely got to make sure we celebrate you, get you, uh, you know, a part of the stuff that she's, the amazing things that she's doing. No, she's doing it. Yes. She actually, she had invited me, like the, the, what was happening recently? The uh, International Winemaker Summit. Yes, yes. And I realized, like, I realized on the day, I was like, if I had agreed here, because this was when I was having grapes, we leaving the cellar around 10 at night. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a good call that I didn't join in, because, yeah. Yeah, it would have been crazy. Yeah. We, okay. Yeah, we actually, we had a chance to partner, um, you know, I uncorked and culture partnered with her and it was just an amazing experience. And it was my introduction to winemakers. So yes. you know, no, she's, actually she had invited me at some point that we were in, where were we? One of these, um, okay, Florida. We, I met her actually in Florida where we were doing some, there were, it was a winemakers. Women, winemaker. women winemakers? Women winemakers, yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's just a full circle, you know, and this is a small network, right? It's a it's small a, network. It's a, it's a small network, but it's big in a way. It's a huge network. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so, yeah. Now she's, she's doing all this and building all these bridges so that people can cross and yeah. Well, I know you have such a busy schedule, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know we put out a call to action for any questions for people that are watching. So if anybody has any questions, I'm just going to scroll up to see if I see any. Um, please let us know in the comments and we will get them answered. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Marcy's saying it's the Women in Wine uh, oh, yeah. event in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, I've really enjoyed our conversation. And I'm very much looking forward to visiting you in South Africa when the world opens back up. Will you help? Will you allow me to come come to your winery and maybe even help you out with some harvesting Definitely. or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I feel like that's part of it, right? I love helping. I love volunteering. Yes, that is part of it. Actually, that is part of it. It's part of it to just to get to be busy with something mm -hmm. and to understand the place, the people, and you know, and the winemaking itself. Yes, yes. But I did want to ask you one question because I know you guys are at level one right now, but it's been a good challenge. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, yeah. we're on lockdown and, you know, no alcohol sales. It's been a whole thing. And how has that affected you? Well, it has affected us. Um, we're planning to grow our local market and we couldn't. So we're now working on doing that now. Now that, you know, so, yeah. Locally it affected that, but internationally at least we're not affected. Okay, well that's good. And and that's where most of your business is, so it kind of worked. Yes. Well that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, and CK, thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoy the time here today. And um thank I know me. absolutely anytime. So once you release that secret that you have coming <laughs> up in July. I'll be yes. emailing you. I'll be emailing you, and I want to. I want to make yes. sure. What's the secret? <laughs> yes, I want to know the secret. <laughs> I know the uncorked and culture community wants to know the secret too. So uh, you know, it'll be something for us to be looking forward to. And, and and in the meantime, we'll definitely mark our calendars for July. Certainly, certainly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much and have a great rest of your harvest, a great rest of your day. I know it's getting late there. Um, thank you. I'm full of gratitude. Thank you so much and have a great day too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so for you guys that are watching, um, just know that, um, you know, we want you to continue following uh, uh, Nsike and, you know, Aslina Wines and learning more about what it is she's doing in the wine world. Because guess what, y'all? Her wine is amazing. And um, if, you, if you haven't tried it, I want you guys to go check it out. There's distributors here in America that sell it. You could go to your local shop. Um, you could also purchase it online at coconoir.com, which is Alicia's, um, you know, online distribution company and her wine club. Um, and so, you know, just make sure you follow um, Aslina Wines and learn more about them. They're on Instagram, Facebook, and of course their website. Um, 
and just know you're going to get some quality South African wine. And once again, you know, follow CK, um, you know, at Aslina Wines, as well as her personal accounts. And of course, you know, spread love. If you like what you see or heard today, please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel, you know, share, share the video, because the more people to watch it, the more people that will learn about Aslina Wines and learn about the history of her journey being the first black woman winemaker in South Africa. Because I feel like, you know, for Women's History Month, my thing is, you know, Wonder Woman and Wine, you know, spotlighting women this month that are doing amazing things in the wine industry. And of course, you can always follow me on my personal Instagram, as well as Uncorked and Culture. Um, and let us know if there's anybody you want to see. If anybody you want to see, anybody you want us to talk to. But we got some good people lined up for this month, some young women that are doing amazing things out in Sonoma and Napa counties in California um, and beyond. So um, make sure you tune in and stay connected.